the greatest power you believe music has to unlock? Oh. Man, so the thing about music, um, there's no other tool, modality, there's no other phenomenon in nature like it. On a physiological level, the brain responds to music in a way that's distinct from anything else in nature. Nothing lights up the brain like music. But on a spiritual level, we let music into places we don't let anybody else. There are songs that we will listen to and we will identify with the words of that song and we will admit feeling that way with that songwriter but we won't admit it to our family members, our friends, our spouses, anyone else. We trust music more than anything else in the world. And we've heard it our whole life. Our moms sang it to us naturally without even knowing it. All cultures sing to their babies. All moms do it across the world. We're wired for it. And learning this and kind of realizing it's kind of tales of the obvious, like, well, yeah, sure. But knowing that, as a clinician, I feel like I have an unfair advantage because I leverage the most loved, most personal, most trusted modality phenomenon on the planet, and it's music. So you talk about this four-step formula. What is the four-step formula for you? Ah, so Vero. All right. Wow. So Vero is an equation. Now, I'm not a math guy, so this is as close to math as we get. Uh, and if my whiteboard wasn't already covered with, like, you know, my world domination plans, uh, I would write it out. But Vero stands for, that's V plus E plus R equals O. And uh, where V equals vision, E equals events, R equals response, and O equals outcome. And I first heard E plus R equals O by leadership expert John C. Maxwell. He described it in a speech he gave. And it was, and then I heard it again by Jack Hanfield, who's co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And he was on stage at an event. We were both speaking at this one event and he shared this equation. And this was shortly after my daughter Bella died. And he said, you know, events plus response equal outcome. And I thought, that's it. Exactly. Because all of the events that had happened through our journey with Bella, uh, first, you know, giving birth to a, a child with a rare fatal skin disease that was undiagnosed uh, beforehand and total surprise. And then going through her getting sick and almost dying, then going through the bone marrow transplant, having it go horribly wrong and spending 99 days in the ICU with her before she dies. All of these events, people, mm, it would have been really easy and understandable to just label tragedy, 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 right? Like automatic. But I... I realized early on if I was going to survive and function, I had to create like a moment, like a wedge in between the event and that automatic debilitating response because there's no way I would be able to function as a dad and as a husband if all those things were occurring as a tragedy. It, it was like a, I was fighting for survival, for my own spiritual and mental survival. So I thought, okay, each time something occurred, I visualized like a gap, like there's this momentary gap. And in that gap, I can place my response. And so what I did is I would think <laughs> every time, what's the most inspiring or empowering response I could make up right now? Like if this was a movie, what could I do right now that would just be the most empowering thing in the face of this or the most inspiring thing in the face of this? And then, of course, because we're creative beings, my brain would go, well, you could do this. Okay, I'm doing it. And I just kept choosing that over and over. And what I found was, as I changed my response, the whole outcome changed. And sure enough, this whole equation started to come ring true. So when Jack shared the equation, I went, I lived this. And I told him that night afterwards. I was like, I, I want you to know I lived that equation. I love the way that you made it so easy because now I can teach it. But then I thought there's something missing because that's very reactive, but we're creative beings. So everything that exists around us in the world first came to us as a thought and then we created it. So we had a vision of something before it existed. 
And I felt like we have to account for that in, in really how to live a created life. So then I just took it upon myself to add a little prefix called V for vision. Because the other thing I noticed was that we all, when we have a goal or we have a vision, we also have like a little subtle expectation. It's kind of unconscious about how much time and effort and energy and resources it's going to take to achieve that goal. Sounds reasonable. And what I noticed was that uh, when it takes more time, effort, energy, or resources, we say things like, oh, this is hard. Or maybe this isn't meant to be. You know, we like make up stories about the fact that it's just taking more than we guessed. And then I, I found that when people, when it would take less time, effort, energy, or resources to accomplish something, people would say things like, oh, it's a sign, or it's meant to be, or that was easy. And I was like, well, yeah, it's a sign. It's a sign that you don't know how to budget or estimate the future. That's all it is. And so I just kind of realized that these things called hard or easy are really just myths that are based on what we expected the moment after we created the vision. That's all they are. And so knowing that, there's a gap between what I guess it's going to take and what it actually takes. And right in that moment, that's when most people go, there's something wrong, crisis, uh, 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 right? And I know for me now, like after going through my whole life journey to this point, that gap is where the whole game of life is played. It's played in that gap because we don't ever get it exactly bullseye. Like it's going to take exactly this much blink and we nail it like, oh yeah, I knew that. It's usually we're off, you know, we're, we miss a little bit. Sometimes we miss a lot. And how we are in the difference between what our vision was and what the events actually tell us, wow, transforms everything. So you've got the vision and then you got a gap. You got the events, they happen, and you have a moment where you can respond and you can go, oh. Or you can just get curious and go, oh, hmm, okay. <laughs> now what? And for me, leveraging and living that equation has been how I've been able to you really you know, talk about my daughter's story in a way that still inspires me, uh, live the journey that I lived with her in a way that still inspires me, work in hospice and work in, with patients who are going through addiction, patients who have Alzheimer's in a way that totally lifts me up because I realize that with every event they're dealing with and every event I witness, I get the last word, I get to respond, so do they. And that response is really ultimately what creates the outcome. Wow.